Let's do it. We have spawning up in the top right for Team Liquid. It is a laser. And down here on the bottom left-hand side of the oh. map, we also have the red Protoss player, also from Team Liquid, and with a pylon in his main base. It is Mana. Yes, it is. Or... And this has to be a cannon rush, right? That was like... I mean, uh... it's weird because even yeah, no. normally with a... Even normally with a cannon rush, you do go for the, like the wall in. You go for the wall in over oh. the ramp. But he's building the pylon before the forge. Wait a minute, what is oh, that? Proxy gate? Is it? It is a gold base first, and Mana I think has sniffed that out. I don't know if he's actually checked the gold base. No, he has <gasps> not seen it. But yeah, this is gonna be. Oh my god. This is going to be the proxy forge and gateway. That's a full wall. I love it. Oh, wow. Mana is coming in with some very super spicy play. You know what? I, you know what I'm really looking forward to? The <laughs> drone transfer from yeah. a laser. Yep. As he sends those drones and they just go to the edge of the cliff because they can't, it's fully walled in. He's going to see this. And now it's like, okay, what do you do from here? Are you going to contest this do you cancel you don't even know it's base? a cannon rush yet though this yeah. could just literally be a little pocket for a depth to hide in this this doesn't oh, even necessarily yeah. have to be a cannon rush like this could actually just be like something regular and now he's <laughs> like oh oh uh, hello sir sir it's too late to pull against this now though it's too late it's, you can't it pull is. your drones against it you need you need like 10 and you're gonna lose at least three or four the beauty of this positioning, by the way, on the gold base cannon is that normally you you would want, if there's like lings or something being made from the larva, you kind of need two cannons to guarantee and secure, feel comfortable oh, about that kill on the hatchery. take the other gold. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. But I mean, this is, this is also going to be interesting because this is still a big investment of how long and how big of a delay it's going to be before you can actually start mining from that. And Mata's aggression is going to kick off way before that point. Yes, it will. Cybercore is about to come. Complete. I now my big question is okay it's good oh it's gonna be double robo right away that makes a lot of sense what I was just about to say is where does he build the first gateway unit do you put it on the bottom side or do you send it in towards the main base by going for double robo immortal into warp prism you get the best of both worlds mm, this is gonna be really really fun and interesting to see now it is kind of funny because with that gold base hatchery even if it doesn't get a chance to mine Remember, there's no wall off for mana. There is an opportunity for a laser to force some uh, extra things back at home. Oh. Mana hasn't invested in a photon cannon in his mineral line either or anything. So if a laser is able to sneakily get some units out from that hatchery over into mana's main base, that could be a problem for mana. It certainly could. Uh, first immortal is started up. Shield battery is already going to be depleted of energy. How many Ravagers do we have here? It's going to be three Ravagers to start. And that will start taking off hull damage or putting mm -hmm. hull damage on. Actually, in fact, the next set of vials might kill that cannon. Is there? There's no other cannon, is there? No, there is. Uh, oh, but he doesn't go for it. He's microing the roach. Oh, he could have actually killed that cannon right away and jumped the entire production. I think there's only one pile, and that was actually a huge opportunity potentially missed there for a laser. Yeah, it definitely can get dangerous if you lose like your your foothold there. But the cannon going to go down regardless the, the problem okay, is the immortals are popping on out anyway so i think that he still should have been able to with good micro hold this army back even with the cannon going down yes what i was more worried about is if the the robos got depowered before the war prison popped but there was a backup pylon anyway so oh, he was yeah, actually yeah. fine uh a laser did lose how many drones just one drone uh on that gold base but that is you know that's a lot of drones relative to his total economy Already a couple of units going down, and this is only going to get more difficult for the Zerg to deal with over time. Yeah, Mortal going to get picked up, dodged out of the Cross of Vials, but one of the shield batteries, the forward shield battery, does end up falling over there. This is kind of a tricky thing also, is when you're going for this double robo play, you do have a lot of Immortal production, but you also oh. are using a lot of your minerals on these Immortals. So you don't actually have a ton of extra minerals to throw off like crazy numbers of shield batteries, unless you're cutting your Immortal production, which you can even see. There's like a short period of time right now where Mana is investing in more shield batteries because he kind of needs them, but he's not making a second immortal right now. No, he is not. Uh, we we do see a lot of damage actually coming in on that one immortal Mana. He's got to be a little bit more careful with these units. 
which does snipe down another Ravager. And he's actually got an Immortal harassing the other gold base. Queen versus Immortal, not something you see too often. Of course, the Immortal's Barrier are going to help out a fair bit there. There are going to be Lings popping out, and actually Ling Speed is about to complete. This could get very scary for Mana with this little force. I think it killed off enough of them as they popped out. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Meanwhile, it looks like the one Roach that came into the main base was also morphed into a Ravager, able to cross file down a bunch of probes. And this is actually starting to get very scary and very chaotic. Honestly, I think Mana's in a lot of trouble right now just yeah. due to the counterattack. He really is. I mean, this is what I was talking about, that ability to just try and put the pressure on. And that's, I think, normally why we end up seeing the wall ends over there. So I guess Mana was hoping that he would be able to see if there was, like, an extra unit made and running around. Because then you could throw up, like, a defensive cannon, maybe, or try and hold the line a little bit. But ends up backfiring quite a bit. Six workers lost when you're already on such a low count is tough. Now the Lings are going to be able to pick off this one Immortal. This is going to also allow the gold base mining to kick off. And Mana is now put in an awkward position. He's got such a strong timer that he has to deal with. And I don't know if he can break through in that time. Yeah, I will say as long as he gets the freedom to micro those units, he can continue to make forward progress into the main base. But by a laser forcing action on the other side, Mana doesn't really get to do... Wait, did he re... He had he to recall something to deal with the links, right? He didn't, or like, he... if there's any potential roaches or ravagers or any other run by Oh, that's one of the immortals that was on the aggressive attack. I was like, we saw that immortal yeah, yeah. die, right? We did. Uh, this is, yeah, this is now a laser making forward progress on this position of mana. Mana's in so much trouble in this game, and a laser is really handling this well by creating so much chaos for mana to deal with. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that immortal should not have been out on the map. That's really unfortunate. That actually may potentially seal the deal here because Mana, he's going to have trouble defending on his offense and he's going to have trouble defending back at home with his actual mineral line. Oh, kill yeah. the pylons, please. please. Yeah, I think the Ravagers are all getting in range to cross the bio down the pylons and he's going to target fire each one down. And with that, there's no more production here for Mana. He actually cannot make any units outside of anything besides his single gate. No, his gateway is also proxied. So he, in fact, cannot make any units right now besides probes. Nope. Uh, I like the decision to go into a Stargate very much. I think that's a really wise decision. The problem is he needs such a long time for that to actually do anything here. Mm -hmm. And with Ling's reinforcing, this Raptor is going to be covered against a surround. Obviously, you can pop battery overcharge, but even if you do... Well, actually, this pylon might just go down. Yeah, I think this game is completely over at this point. It, it almost doesn't matter how well Mana Micros the Immortals anymore. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes it still feels good to just pick off a couple of these Ravagers of the War Prism Immortal Micro. You know what? There's fewer things to macro. There's less There's less macro happening right now, <laughs> Steadfast. So that means you can focus all of your attention on your War Prism Immortal and just get a little bit of a confidence boost before you potentially have to head into game number two. He might not realize how much... How, how far behind he is at this point because it, it won't kind of show itself in normal ways for a while we are actually going to see this immortal finding a few drones that are just kind of on their lonesome and it is worth noting as well that okay never mind there's the gg i was going to say it is worth noting as well that a laser doesn't have any layer he doesn't have any tech behind this this is still like this isn't like a laser's you know on a three base economy with roach speed on the way and aspire about to complete or even not even a three base economy just a two base economy with like 35 drones and like yeah a spire that's about to pop out four or five mutas and end the game like it was still a situation where even a laser might not have been feeling super super duper confident as much as like the supplies would show but very fun game number one and uh map saying in the chat amazing clown fiesta and it really was i gotta i gotta applaud a laser's decision making to go for that other gold the counterattack really dislodged Mana because if you're if you're able to just micro immortals in a war prism against Roach Ravager indefinitely, you can kill almost infinite numbers of Roach Ravager. Like it can be real gross feeling. Yeah, I I really would love to see that game almost like replayed in that same way, but with a wall off there from Mana because mm. it's not that the wall off completely stops all potential of like a counterattack or anything. But the low commitment of a single roach or like a one ravager or something moving across the map and just suddenly wreaking havoc and causing your probes to all stop mining and everything. 
that stops because now there's a wall and you have to get something back in at home to warp in. You have to recall a stalker or an immortal or something, or you can get up a cannon eventually, but you have the time to react and get something up. I feel like that actually would have changed the nature of a lot of that game. Just literally having the wall there instead of doing the wall at the mineral line. I actually think that's a really cogent point, and I, th I think you're definitely right about that one. Uh, but regardless, cool play from Mana. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Great defense from a laser. And we are going to be heading into game number two on Amphion. Spawning up at the top left for Team Liquid. He is one map away from punching his ticket into the playoffs. It is a laser. And down in the bottom left-hand side of the map, we have the red Protoss player from Team Liquid as well. He is Mana. That was a bit of a goofy game, but it was a fun one. Absolutely oh, yeah. fun. Uh, and sometimes we need a little Clown Fiesta in our lives. We are going to see Mana electing to go for the hatch block. This is something I am so surprised we haven't seen more of on Amphion because there is a little feature to this map right above the third base. That's not even what I'm thinking of. That is one of them, but there is a feature above the right, uh, the third base. Yeah, right there. That Reaper jump in point. Nope, to the left. Marco. To the left, to the left. Polo, there we go. Yeah, so you can park an Adept right there, uh, and you can threaten <laughs> like five mineral patches from that position. It is really frustrating to deal with uh, for Zerg, and I I'm surprised once again that I haven't seen more Protoss players kind of utilizing it. You can theoretically micro your way through it, and, and we'll see if a laser is able to do that and do that successfully. But it is quite annoying to deal with. I do want to point out, by the way, Mana getting a 21 Nexus, which is... Well, normally it's a 20 Nexus. That's maybe maybe a little bit like... Um, maybe just still thinking about that previous game and a little bit like... Huh, a little bit uh, distracted mentally. Yeah, it might be some small little things like that or just the crow being sent out so early on for the, the hatch blocks and everything. Whatever mm -hmm, it is, mm -hmm. it is going to be... A very, very slight delay, but nothing too significant. Uh, what do you think about Amphion? Because I feel like when, whenever I look at either one of these two players, I do think that they are both players that consider the map quite a bit. I know that most players will consider maps when they pick their build orders and everything, but I especially think Mana and Elazer are players that really do enjoy the strategic thinking and the strategic build order choices for StarCraft. I mean, there's a lot of features to Amphion that uh, we haven't even talked about. Obviously, those minerals in the back that uh, Mapu was alluding to, uh, they allow for you to potentially expand as the Protoss. You, you can actually full wall the natural as the Protoss player and go for that. Oh, Probe going down. Nice little trap there from a laser, but Mana going a little bit too deep looking for that third hatchery timing. And a laser did actually delay the third hatchery a, a decent bit. Not getting into that 30 supply. That could cause Mana to maybe overreact a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you can take the pocket third as the Protoss if you are so inclined. And oh, we've also got a little pool. Hot tub? Hot tub? Is, Is it a pool or a hot tub? Yeah, no, that's, that's got faucets. That's a hot tub. But it's so big. And it's made of stone. There's fish in it. What? Oh, there, there, are, like, there are like hot springs and stuff that are made of stone. But they don't have faucets generally. Well, how how do you fill up how do you fill up the hot spring? Oh, that's a good question. I with a hose. Wait, are you serious? Wait, no, hot hot springs are usually natural occurring. I I know, I know, Ravi. Okay. I'm, I'm like Dave, Dave. I'm trying to be dumb right now. You're supposed to correct me. No, right, no, no. This, I was I was going along right with the ride for the dumb. That was that was. Oh wow, that's so informative. <laughs> wow, naturally forming faucets in the wild. <laughs> that's so cool. Oh. Where does this hose? Right, well, where does the water come from in this hose? Well, it's in the hose, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> the hose naturally forms with the water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we do have a void rate coming out over here very early on from Mana. Yeah, I I want to say normally I would see this, and I feel like in the past I've always said, oh, it's kind of a sign that you're either looking to try and be a little bit safer, or you're trying to do something maybe a little bit cheekier. But I feel like I've seen these void rate openings from so many Protoss players the last couple of weeks that I'm starting to wonder if maybe the meta is just shifting and Protoss players are just be being more comfortable with Void openings as opposed to going straight to Oracle or going into like Phoenix or something. I feel like certain Protoss players just like it. 
They're just like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm fond. That was a really nice save right there. He just uh, simultaneously dropped both both Spore Crawler Morphs and transfusing the drone, a laser with the wow. baby sitting on that defense. That was very nice. Oracle able to get one kill, but considering how many drones were exposed with no Spore in the natural and only one queen there, that is very good for Miko. Speaking of a laser, by the way, that is one fast Hydroden, if ever I've seen it. Yeah, it really is. Also, how, did he how the, the heck main? did these links get into the main? I mean, there's an adept wall. <laughs> how did these links get in? Yeah, we're <laughs> we're like doing the investigation right here. Uh, there was no sign of forced entry through the minerals. Uh, was the adept <laughs> bribed? Mm, is the adept actually a changeling? And then they like the zap it with corrupt. the taser. And they're like, no, he's not a changeling. He's a little pissed at me now. now. <laughs> Zapped him right in the <laughs> face. Uh, oh, man. This is a very old school style of playing and you you've alluded to this a lot you were pretty sure that a laser was going to go for something very aggressive on like a mid-game timing and you could not have been more correct because this is this is going to be hyper aggressive but he doesn't need to go right away you can sometimes go with like you you get hydra range and you still go into like hydra speed behind it but if he doesn't go right away then blink and plus one are both going to be done as well as a significant number of gateways and that is going to significantly improve the ability for Ooh. Mana to mount some kind of defense. He does get a revelation out, sees a handful of these Hydras, and I mean, even just the timing of these Hydras is already a little bit alarming here. We're starting to see Shield Battery being thrown up inside the natural expansion, Sentries being warped in back at home for Mana. I actually like a lot of the decisions he's making right now. Is he's, yeah, he really is just preparing for the big attack. Yeah, this absolutely is a significant attack coming in here from a laser. Uh, a laser not getting bane speed, by the way. He did out on the baneling nest, but this is going to be a very bare bones attack. Blink will complete now, and that's a very fortunate timing for Mana. He's trying to get in towards that robotics bay. Love the stasis wards, by the way, and good defensive blink micro so far. Oh, but stasis ward only getting a couple of lings. And a laser's got a lot of hydras here. Battery overcharge will get popped. I think a laser should probably back away from that, but he's gonna try and blow it up with veins, and he will get through. Mana just doesn't have enough. A laser yeah, just it, blasts it just the third. Simply did not have enough. A oh, wonderful Rika. Oh my god, did he get out with the probes? He got out with a lot of them, I think. Oh my god, yeah. soften up by a single bane link, but not quite killed. I still don't know if it's gonna be enough. You, I think he can still stabilize somehow. Wow. If he's able to get a really clean defense off, you can lose the third and still make this work, but just does he have enough to actually stabilize? That's the thing, battery overcharge is already on cooldown. There's nothing at the natural. Ooh. We are gonna see these gateways getting depowered at the front and Mana is just gonna have no choice but to fold in the face of that relentless Hydra Bane attack. Very well done by a laser and he, can now kiss the group stage goodbye because he has made his